Okay, I think we stopped there in the last class where we spoke about, uh, okay, the last thing I said was on uh, Wigner asset cell. We spoke about Wigner asset cell and uh, going into uh, two d lattice, I hope you took your time to even move ahead of us with the causeway. Okay, for the two d lattice types, we have an equation here, equation four, which is similar to one of the previous equations we have seen in this class. And that equation four is, uh, has components of A1, A2, and A3. But since we are talking in terms of uh, 2D, the A3 components is uh, vanished because uh, U3 will be zero. So when we are uh, dealing with 2D lattices, we are interested in two directions. So there is no need for having uh, the plus U3, A3, like we have in the previous equations. So um, let's move ahead. Okay, so uh, for, let's move ahead, let's move ahead. So in this figure here, we have figure five, we have uh, 2D lattices and uh, this, is a square lattice. If you're just looking at the dots, you notice that the dots are. Hello, sir. Hello. Sir, we are not seeing your screen. I think you are the only one that is not seeing my screen. Yes, I think it's, it's network. Then uh, you are the one, not everyone. Can you do something about it quickly? Maybe you should, uh, if the problem is not from my end. I can confirm here that uh, others can view my screen. Or is there any other person that cannot view the screen? I cannot view my screen. So you can see you are the only one in that category. So maybe you should uh, disconnect from your network and reconnect. Okay, okay, so, sir. okay, okay. So looking at this point, this, uh, if you try to carve out a cell in this space, you'll see that they will come out as squares. While if you uh, look at the others, this, uh, the figure C is a rectangle. And uh, so in short, the major thing is that these are 2D lattices. And uh, looking at this point, this is A1, A2, A1, A2. And uh, one of the property of having the square lattice is that the angle between uh, A1 and uh, A2 will be 90 degrees. Same with rectangular. But uh, for some other uh, special lattices, the angle would not be uh, 90 degrees. So, and uh, in 2D lattices, there are infinite number of, uh, of variants we can have. There are so much, don't let me say infinite number, but there are a lot of uh, variants we can have from the, uh, well, we can create with 2D lattice types. But when we move to 3D, there are 14 major types. So under the 14, they can be subdivided into some other categories, but uh, uh, there are 14 major Bravis lattice types, which we'll be looking at uh, one after the other. The number one and uh, the most common is the cubic. The cubic is uh, very straightforward because we interact with a lot of cubes in our day-to-day -day activities. Cube, uh, sugar cube, uh, and several other cubes. So, and uh, we just imagine you having a sugar cube and uh, at the eight corners of that uh, sugar cube, you have atoms, lattice points located at each of the eight corners. Uh, such is referred to as a simple cube. So when you now move a step further and put another lattice point at the center of that simple cube. It is called a body-centered cube. And uh, when you now 
look at the first one, which is a simple cube. I decide to put points at each of the faces, having a points at uh, each of the eight corners. You now decide to put a point again at each of the faces. You'll have what is called face centered cube because at the each of the faces, at the center of each of the faces, you are having an additional point. So, and that makes it a face centered cube. This one makes this. Okay. So uh, at the center of each of the faces, we have uh, a additional point. That's why this is a face-centered cube. So, and uh, this structure is called a simple cubic structure. The one having a point at the center is called a body-centered uh, cubic structure. And the one having an additional uh, lattice point at each of the faces of that simple cube is called face-centered cubic structure. And being a cube, all sides of the cube are equal. That is one of the properties of a cube that they taught us in primary three or four. All sides of the cube are equal. And uh, maybe when you got to JS1, they now told you that all the angles are 90 degrees, just like we have an angle in a square to be 90 degrees. So, so uh, these two statements are written mathematically as a uh, a1 equal to A2 equal to A3 and alpha equal to beta equal to gamma. So alpha, beta, and gamma are the angles and uh, A1, A2, A3 are the vectors that determine the primitive lattice vectors. Uh, A1, A2, A3 are primitive lattice vectors. Okay, so I think we, we can move on. In tetragonal, we have a uh, tetragonal is uh, just like a cuboid, but in this case, uh, so, uh, but in this case, we have uh, a face, we have two faces that are, that looks like square, and we have some other faces that uh, appear as uh, rectangles. So we have uh, two sides are equal, and the third is not equal to the first two. So two sides must be equal. Then the third will not be equal to the uh, uh, to the first two, and all the angles are 90 degrees. So there is one variance. Uh, we have the simple tetragonal and uh, body-centered tetragonal. And also going to the third. So now we have spoken about one, two, three, four, five. We are going to 14. So I'm coming to autorhombic. Autorhombic, the angles just like uh, cubic and tetragonal is still 90 degrees. The angles between uh, uh, the faces, sorry, the angles between the uh, vectors, uh, all 90 degrees, but neither of the sides are equal. A1 is not equal to A3. So in that category, we have the simple autorhombic. We have a body-centered autorhombic that is having a point, a lattice point at the center of that cube, also uh, carrying uh, the atoms. Then uh, we also have face-centered cubic, in which the simple cube, the simple sorry, face-centered autorhombic, which means that the simple autorhombic will have lattice points at additional lattice points at each of the faces, and we also have base-centered. Uh, Autorhombic, which implies that we will have a simple cubic with lattice points at the basis. So now going to monoclinic, we have uh, none of the sides are equal, just like we have in autorhombic. None of the sides are equal. And then uh, alpha equal to gamma. You can view alpha from this. Uh, image alpha is uh, angle between uh, two uh, vectors, yeah? Beta angle between two other vectors and gamma angle between two other vectors. Now you can take uh, the three, A1, A2, and A3, you can take them in pairs. 
Oh, yeah, the angle between A1 and A2 will be alpha. Angle between A1 and A3 will be gamma. Angle between A2 and A3 will be beta. So uh, alpha, two of the angles is equal to 90 degrees. But the third one, the third angle is not 90 degrees. So that's another variance. And we have a, a simple and a base centered variant of such. So we also have hexagonal structure. The hexagonal structure is, it looks like an hexagon. We are looking at this, oh, sorry. Looking at this uh, uh, shape, it looks like an hexagon. And uh, two of the vectors are equal. And uh, the one that is not even equal is cannot, we can't view it easily here, it's, uh, it's the height. So looking at it from the face, we can see A1, A2. The A3 is, uh, so every line you see here, they are equal. They are, these are equilateral triangles, but the height of this cell, look, if you look at it from the side, it has an height, and that height is represented as A3. Uh, the, uh, and uh, A3 is since it's standing upright, just like because uh, we are looking at it from the face, that is why we are seeing an hexagon. But from the side, you uh, it's from the side that you'll be able to view the uh, let me try and do something like this. So I can call this. A1, A2, A1, all and not, but there is also looking at this from the side, should also have something like this. So, and here would account for A3. So the height there is A3, and the angle between A1 and A3 is alpha, which is 90 degrees. The angle between A2 and A3 is beta, which is 90 degrees. The angle between A1 and A2 is gamma, uh, which is 120 degrees. So moving further, we have triclinic, which you can follow the information that has been provided, and uh, rhombohedral, which you can also follow the information that has been provided here. So, and uh, everything we have here, is showing us what we call a conventional, everything we have here are conventional cells because they are not uh, conventional in the sense that they are not primitive cells. They are conventional cells and not primitive cells. Because when, if I ask you to count how many lattice points do we have in a simple cubic, for instance, a simple cubic, what we have here, the number of lattice points we have here in that simple cubic, fine, you can count eight, but each of the eight is contributing an one eight. Of its value to that cell. So we have eight, it is contributing eight of their value to that cell and they are contributing the other seven over eight of their value to neighboring cells. So that means that the number of, uh, the number of lattice points we have in this super cubic is one. When we move on to body-centered cubic, the number of lattice points in this body-centered cubic, you can count it by saying that there are eight lattice points, uh, uh, let's assume we, each of the lattice points have an atom each. We can say there are eight atoms on, there are eight atoms at the corners of the cube. Eight atoms at the corners of the cube. And each of the eight atoms are, are contributing one over eight of their value, meaning that is one. So we have one atom at the corner, but there is also one atom at the center, at the center of that cube. And that atom at the center of that cube is contributing its own value to that cube because the atom at the center, the atom here is completely within the cube. So since it is completely within the cube, 
that means it is 100% inside the cube. So, and that means that we can count that as one. And then we can say that the number of atoms in the body centered uh, uh, cubic is two. So for a conventional cell, since what we have here is a conventional cell, a conventional cell is easy to view, easy to work with, but there is a little difference with uh, when you really want to do some in-depth analysis. This is a conventional cell. We also have what we've said earlier, which is a primitive cell. The primitive cell has one atom per cell. The primitive cell has one atom, a single atom per cell, while the conventional uh, cell for body-centered cubic has two atoms. Okay. So let's move forward, let's move forward. Let's talk about this. Okay, I think there is space here. Let's talk about the face center cubic at this corner. The face center cubic has eight corners, and each of the corners carries a lattice point. Assuming each of the lattice points carries one atom, then we can say the eight corners of the cube have an atom each. Since, uh, but each of the atoms at the corners contributes one over eight of their value to the cell. That implies that one over eight times uh, eight means one. That means the eight atoms at the corners of the face center cubic all amount to just having as good as one atom within the cell. I've said that over and over. I hope there is no problem at this point. Okay, so let's continue. We should also note the, that the face center cubic, as for looking at the face center cubic, the face center cubic, just like any other cube, has six faces. And each of the faces carry a lattice point. And from our assumption, that it is each of the faces carry an additional atom. So since we have six faces, that is six additional lattice points, looking at uh, each of them, can somebody tell me what fraction of, what fraction, let's take this lattice point for instance from the face center cubic, what fraction of this Lattice points is being uh, is is being contributed to this cube. This particular atom, what percentage or what fraction of its value is this cell enjoying? Can somebody one answer? Two, one over two. One over two. Oh, one over two. Who, uh, who are those that are answering? Yes, sir. I can borrow the I can answer. Okay. Okay. I do give it over. Okay. So, okay. Uh, we have six faces there. Six, and each of them contributes half of their value. That means that at the faces, the uh, the total number of atoms that the cell is enjoying by virtue of the presence of atoms at the faces will be three. Then if we now ask, how many cells do we have in that uh, cube? Sorry, how many atoms do we have in that cube? The answer is four. That is, there are four atoms in that conventional cubic cell or in that conventional cube, but, uh, uh, oh yes, in that conventional unit cell. But for a primitive cell, we have just one atom per primitive cell. So there is a way, uh, the simple cubic, fine, it is simple, it is in its uh, primitive form. 
But when we come to the body center cubic, there is a way we bring out the shape that will be half of the volume of this cube. And each of the, and that shape can repeat itself in space and it will form this body center cubic. And there is also a shape that is one quarter of this volume that can be put together to form this shape. Fine, this shape that we can see here is easy to view, easy to work with, easy to appreciate, but the primitive cell gives us uh, more information because when you understand, since it uh, repeats uniformly in space, and a unit cell is having a lattice point, it's easy for you to say you want to uh, uh, use it to understand the system. If you can understand one, you understand all. That is, if you understand the property of a single cell, you can say that you understand everything we have in this uh, cube. So don't make the mistake of wanting to count the number of uh, lattice points here and begin to say eight plus one, nine. Uh, so I hope there is no question. Is there any question? Can we move on? Okay. Silence means no question. So we were spoken about 14 different values that is under one, two, three, four, five, under seven categories. Now, so out of them, because we are more conversant with uh, cubic structures, let's talk about uh, cubic structures. So, and uh, under the cubic structure, we have three variants, the simple, the body centered, and the face centered. And uh, under each of them, there are some questions to answer. The first question is saying, what is the volume of the conventional cell? Like I told you, the figures we have in the page before this is telling us conventional, uh, the shape of their conventional uh, cells. So now, uh, what is the volume of the cell? The volume of the simple cubic cell is A3 because the cell looks something like this. So, and uh, the vectors A1, vectors A2, vectors A3, they are, if we call this A1, A2, A3, they are modulus, or the, they are, it's now plural moduli, will be A. That means write it as A1 equal to A2 equal to A3. equal to A. So if uh, each of the size, uh, sides is A, then the volume will be A cube. And the same thing applies to the other cells. The other cells uh, as well, we, uh, we can decide to say this is also, as we have uh, A1, A2, A3, we can say this is also A1, A2, A3. And come and say A1, A2, A3. So, Currently, we are talking about the conventional cell, and uh, that is exactly what we see. So, the volume, I don't think we need to tell much on this A cube, for each of them, A cube. The number of lattice points per conventional cell, I think I've uh, taken you through that. The simple cubic is one, body centered cubic is two, face centered cubic is four. The volume of the primitive cell. The volume of the primitive cell. Mm, sorry, I think there is one. Uh, there is a problem with uh, this. I, there is there is a problem here. Yeah. This should not be the volume of the primitive cell. Should be the volume of the conventional cell divided by number of lattice points. So this should be 
a cube over one. Sorry, this is wrong. And the volume of the primitive cell for body center cubic is a cube divided by two. Sorry, this is wrong. And the volume of uh, primitive cell in face center cubic is a cube over four. Um, yes, so, so the, uh, what I currently have there is talking about the, uh, uh, like the number of, uh, um, like the number of uh, 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 lattice points per, uh, okay, uh, let's just forget about what we had there. So this, uh, what I've written here, the original volume of the community cell, because the volume of the conventional cell, for instance, for face-centered cubic is a cube, and it has four lattice points per conventional cell. So that is, it. there are four primitive cells in this conventional cell. That means that the volume of each of the primitive cell should be a cube divided by four. So there is also another property, the number of nearest neighbors, the number of nearest neighbors. That is six, eight, 12. So I'll be showing you this uh, later on, but I'll say number of nearest neighbors. Well, if you try to take uh, this point, for instance, I want to count the number of nearest neighbors. This is the nearest neighbor one. This is the nearest neighbor two. This is the nearest neighbor three. There should be another nearest neighbor here, four. There should be another nearest neighbor here, five. And another nearest neighbor here, six. So, and if you so desire, you may want to, at least we have defined a crystal, uh, uh, defined a crystal lattice as uh, something that repeats continuously in space. So if uh, this is just one of them, then the other neighbors that we have decided not to see before, but I've now changed our mind to see. Let me use another color over there. Can I get the eraser? Can I get another color? You can, oh boy, sorry. We don't do that. Can we have a pen? Okay, you can decide to now look at it this way. So in crystal lattice, you draw till you are tired. But the good thing is that if you draw one, you've drawn all. So these points we were talking about earlier, you can now see the, uh, the uh, six neighbors. This is one neighbor, another neighbor. Though there are some other neighbors here. We have another neighbor here, another neighbor here. But these neighbors uh, that are color blue, they are not the nearest neighbors. They are not the nearest neighbors to the central red atom. This is the central red atom. It is closest to one. The distance between this point to this is equal to distance from here to here, distance from here to here, distance from here to here, distance from here to, here, from here to the lower one, distance from, from here to the upper one. Every other ones that are color blue are farther to this central atom compared to the other ones that are color red. So th that makes the red atoms to be closest to this particular point. So being the closest nearest neighbors, their number of their number is called uh, coordination number. So for a simple cubic, you can see I've just demonstrated that of a simple cubic to be six. For a face center cubic, that is very straightforward. You can just view it straight away from, uh, from this point.
this at the center, the closest neighbors are the points at the corners of that cell. So is it for you to say that the uh, coordination number is eight? So that's uh, straightforward. And for the face center cubic, looking at, uh, we will take this point at this corner, the closest neighbor this man here is having is one, two, three. Three. And when you view that three very well, when we want to talk about that three within this cell, okay, let me pause here while somebody is raising up his hand. Innocent. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, back to the other slide, the slide before the slide after this one. Please, uh, you yes, may sir. need to speak up a bit. I can hardly hear you. Back to the slide after this one. Where you can see that, um, okay, where I can, okay, where yeah. I can shoot some things, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, what's the problem? Eh? You can't shoot the volume of the film, so I, 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 I guess I was lost there. I don't know why you can't see that. I can't say it because I made I made a mistake. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Yes, but I, made it. I, thought, I thought it was correct as well. Because in some I have something like this in some conductor as as that. Uh, okay, but uh, a quick way to know that it is wrong is to say that the volume of the conventional cell. The volume of the conventional cell here, when I tell you what is the, let's say the unit is in centimeters, do you know you would easily tell me that the volume uh, will be centimeter cube? True or false? True. Okay. But when we come here, you won't be able to tell me the volume is still centimeter cube. Ooh. So that is one. But, uh, but the major point while that made me to know that I made a mistake here is uh, uh, it's uh, a cube plus b in the volume of a cell, and there is one lattice point or one primitive cell within this cell. And there is one lattice point or one primitive cell in that conventional cube. Then we can say that a cube divided by one should give us the volume of primitive cell. And the same thing applies here. The volume is a cube. There are two lattice points per that cell. Then the volume should be a cube divided by two. The volume of the primitive cell should be a cube divided by two. Exactly. Okay, sir. It's clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, we're talking about uh, trying to calculate the number of lattice points in the face center cube. Okay, let's use this, this man here. Let's assume this is a cube. Let's assume this is a face-centered cube. And uh, let's take this man here as our central atom. The closest atoms to this man is one, two, and three. The ones are the faces. They have the shortest distance to this central atom. So, and when we look at this cube in particular, each of these is contributing half of its value to this cube. So since we have three here, I can easily say that there are three, uh, uh, three lattice points on the closest ones to the faces and each of the three is contributing half to that cube. And that gives us uh, three over two. And when you look at uh, this central atom we're talking about, we have only considered one over eight of its surrounding. It is, uh, this is just a corner, one over eight of its surrounding. It still has another atom, another cell 
that uh, should be here and uh, two others at this side. So, and so if you look at it, that from this point, it should have four, it should be interacting with four cells beneath it and four cells above it. And what does that imply? That implies that, that implies that the six faces, oh sorry, uh, the eight other corners, this is eight over two from one corner, then eight, since there are eight, uh, it is interacting with eight, this is interacting with eight cubes. This point is interacting with eight cubes, but we've only considered one. So eight times three over two should give us 12. Yes, that should give us 12. So that means that the number of closest neighbors to this point is 12. So we may have noticed before, but we are talking about primitive lattice vectors, A1, A2, and A3. A1, A2, and A3. We use them to define uh, the primitive lattice vectors. For this cube, a1 is as good as we say a x caret plus zero y caret plus zero z caret. That is a characteristic of a1. While a2 will be zero x caret plus a y caret plus zero z caret. So when you view a1 and you view a2, I don't think when if you view them, maybe not with empty stomach anyway, but when you view them with a, a well-filled stomach, you should notice that A1 is pointing in the X direction, purely in the X direction, while A2 is pointing purely in the Y direction. And when we do the same thing for A3, it will be pointing purely in the Z direction, meaning that the three vectors are mutually perpendicular to each other. And the when we, 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 and uh, when you also try to solve the modulus, you notice that they have the same length. So this is a simple cube. This describes A1, A2, and A3. They describe a simple cube, meaning that all the sides are equal, and the angles between them are also equal and uh, mutually perpendicular to each other. So, and if you want to calculate the volume of uh, a cube, or oh, sorry, I want to calculate the volume of a parallel pipe or any three dimensional object, or you know A1, A2, and A3. Volume is equal to A1 dot A2 cross A3. You get the volume of the parallel pipe. So, and the shape of, uh, the shape of the primitive and within our cell cells are cubic. We'll see that very soon. I, I would uh, try to demonstrate some things for us, like I promised, on a simple uh, crystal lattices. So, body centered cubic, the primitive vectors is what we have here A1, A2, and A3. And the shape of the primitive cell is rhomboedron, while that of the Wigner cell cell is truncated octahedron. We'll be seeing more of that very soon. Okay, so let's come to face center cubic, just like we had in the body center cubic. For face center cubic, 
these are the primitive lattice vectors, A1, A2, and A3. Okay, I think I missed something else from this table. I did not talk about parking fraction. Yes, I wanted to ask that. Okay. I also missed the number of second nearest neighbors. And I was about to mention that before clearing the screen. But anyway, just like we have number of nearest neighbors, there are also some neighbors. There are some neighbors that are closer, that are close, but not as close as the first nearest neighbors. So for simple cubic, we have 12, body center cubic, six, and face center cubic, uh, six. So parking fraction. Parking fraction is, you know, we have imagined we have a cube. The volume of the cube is a cube. And this, and um, what, uh, and we should also try to now imagine that in the center of that cube, we have a sphere. To make it simple, we have a ball. And uh, it is now now your work to imagine that we want a ball, a sphere that will be inside that cube. And, is, uh, and uh, that, you know, you can put any type of uh, ball or within a cube. But now, what is the largest ball? you can put that will fit into that cube. What is the largest ball that will fit into that cube? Having known the largest ball that will fit into that cube, then you now ask yourself, what fraction of that cube is this sphere occupying? That is parking fraction. So, when you uh, the it was these figures that uh, reminded me so when you have let's go back when you have a uh, a cube i think i prefer to have a diagram like this when you have a cube and it's having a ball within it the ball is large. It is touching each of the six sides. The ball is touching each of the six sides. Then you can now ask yourself, what is the radius of that ball? Can somebody answer that? What is the radius of that ball? I'm listening. What is the radius of the ball? If you want to speak, if you want to answer the question, just answer straight away. A over two. A over two. A over two. Who is speaking, please? A over two. Who is, yes, who is speaking? Who is speaking? I'm not sure. Okay. Before I'm not, I'm not sure, Peter. That name rings a bell. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. So, somebody has answered. A over two. So when you have a sphere of radius A over two, what would be the volume of that sphere? The volume will be four, volume of sphere is four over three by R cube. Then the, then we can say volume equal to four over three by, since our radius is uh, A over two. Cube. So moving further to find the volume of this cube, 
oh sorry volume of the sphere let me put s here to say volume of sphere so the volume of the sphere will be four pi a cube divided by eight three times eight 24 and that will be pi a cube over six so I will now say, what is the volume of that cube? You've said it's a cube. So now the parking fraction is volume of sphere. Vs over V cube. That's parking fraction. And that is equal to volume of the sphere is by a cube over six and the volume of uh, the cube is a cube. So a cube will cancel a cube. I will be left with pi over six. And that is why we have pi over six here. So go, moving forward, what is the volume of, uh, sorry, what is the parking fraction? for the body centered cubic. We have said that the number of lattice points in uh, the conventional body centered cubic is two. Now the question is, now you have a cube. The sides are, uh, the volume of that cube is a cube. You want to put two spheres inside that cube. What is the largest size of uh, these, those two spheres? They must be identical. That is, the two spheres must have the same dimension. What will be, uh, and you want to put two spheres of the same, two identical spheres, you want to put them inside that cube. You want to put them in, uh, what is the largest size of the spheres? What will be the largest size of those spheres that will occupy that cube to the maximum possible uh, uh, level? So having found the size of those balls, you now fix them into the cube that you now calculate what fraction of this cube is currently being occupied. So now that the same thing applies to a face center cubic. You are trying to put four spheres into a cube of volume A cubed. What will be the size of those four balls that will enter that cube and occupy the largest volume within the cube, the largest possible volume within the cube. So those, uh, so having put the four spheres in them, you now try to calculate what fraction of that cube is now occupied by spheres. So if we do what we have done to single cubic for body centered cubic, we have 0 0.68, which is uh, pi root three over eight. And when you do the same thing for body uh, face centered cubic, you would have 0 0.74. Please, okay, uh, may Brian, when did I make you post? So, okay, where is Levi? Is Levi absent today? Okay, uh, it is one o'clock. Uh, Levi may have some other things to do. So, so while we continue with our class, 
So it's one o'clock. If you want to leave, please feel free. So. So the uh, okay, uh, these figures are even beautiful enough to demonstrate. This is uh, what, uh, simple cubic, body center cubic, and face center cubic. You can see one lattice point in each of the faces, and uh, the shape we have here is as good as we, we've taken a sphere, cut it into eight equal parts are now making them to occupy each of the corners. It is as good as having the same, it's as good as having the same uh, uh, sphere, you not cutting it and just placing it within uh, the, or placing it within the cube. You can have a, uh, a sphere and place it within the cube and uh, it will be as good as what we have here. And this, in the second diagram, we have a body central cubic. We, we want to put two balls within this cube. If, uh, for you to have the balls to have uh, largest volume, then you must have to take one of them and cut into it such that one of them will occupy the corners and one will stand at the central. So with this understanding, you can now begin to determine that what will be the size of this sphere. At least you know, this is like, a, uh, this is as uh, this shape has shown you 50% of the solution you need. So what is remaining is to find out that if this to this, if here to here is A, here to here is also A, and to here is A. Then what is the radius of these spheres? And uh, for face centered cubic, three spheres have been cut into half, and the last sphere, the, uh, the fourth sphere, has been cut into eight. And uh, eight the sphere that is cut into it has been made to occupy the corners of the cube, while the spheres that have been cut in halves have been made to occupy the faces, has been made to occupy the faces of the cube. So the four spheres in this uh, diagram are identical. They have the same dimensions. So since the first phase have the same uh, dimension, uh, uh, with this knowledge, you can now say, and we also know that this, uh, let me say, uh, we also know that this, uh, sorry, year to year is A, year to year is A, and uh, year to year is also A. Easily, we can now say that what is the largest size of the sphere such that four of them will occupy this cube? Then after that, what is the fraction of that cube that is being occupied by spheres? So a quick way to go about this is to know that uh, in the body center cubic, or if you can calculate the body diagonal, the diagonal across the body, and uh, note that within the body, body diagonal, uh, that should be, is it A root three or so? Uh, uh, one quarter goes through this first, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this first uh, uh, sphere, and half goes through the second sphere, and one quarter also goes through the third sphere. So with that illustration, you can deduce what will be the radius of this sphere. And for the face center cubic, we look at this cube and we calculate what is the length of this 
face diagonal. What's the length of this face diagonal? And uh, knowing that, we can also know that one quarter is being taken by the first sphere, half is being taken by the second sphere, and one quarter is being taken by the third. So, and that can help us to uh, deduce what is the uh, 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 largest the sphere, what will be the largest volume of a sphere that can occupy this cube. Having known that, we will now calculate the volume of the four spheres and divide by a cube, which is the volume of the cube. So, and that will give us uh, what we have over there. So we also have some uh, crystals, sodium chloride crystals, and like what I would like to also view, visualize uh, some things with some uh, computer applications. Let me try to basically, okay. Um, yes. Okay. So, let's uh, me the computer. Okay, so uh, let us come uh, let me put on okay, so I want us to visualize uh, something here with a computer application called the uh, X Christine. us to look at uh, aluminium well before then I'm coming this so, then um, yeah here, yes, I am. So before then, this is uh, like uh, this uh, quantum espresso code. It is uh, used in uh, understanding the nature of uh, materials at the atomic scale. And uh, what I have there is aluminium. Aluminium. Aluminium is uh, and the aluminium. We are uh, uh, this is what should interest you. The cell parameters here in angstrom for the aluminium uh, crystal is assumed to be 0 0.02 angstrom. On the, so this is what we have here highlighted here is A1. What we have highlighted here is A2. And uh, looking at uh, this, it's as good as we're saying 2.02 X caret plus 2.02 Y caret plus zero. And uh, for A2, 2.02 X plus 2.02 Z. And for the third A3, we have 2.02 2.02 uh, y plus 
see when you look at uh, the uh, 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 the page on the primitive lattice vectors, you will notice this resembles what we have in face center cubic. In face center cubic, we have uh, a one to mean y plus z, a two to mean x plus z, and a three to mean uh, x plus y. So these uh, cell parameters have uh, clearly told the computer application that this is face centered cubic. So uh, that aside, let's uh, look at some other things that uh, it's on this page. One, uh, let's go, don't let bother you with everything we have here, but what should bother you is, uh, yeah, we have eyebrow equal to zero. Eyebrow equal to zero means that the cell is being defined by these cell parameters here. And so there's uh, under N81, it's saying number of atoms. The number of atoms here is one because in a primitive cell, we have one atom. In a primitive cell, we have one atom. Though I told you it is face centered cubic. Face centered cubic, that is conventional, but in the primitive, it's one. And uh, we also have a uh, number of atom types, which is two. So, and uh, so let's forget about every other thing here. And uh, let's go back and visualize what we are trying to visualize. Let me make it bigger. So this is when you view this, this is face centered cubic. Uh, this particular point, this particular lattice point is at the lower bottom corner. Okay, let, let me make it, uh, let me make it bigger so that, let's increase the number of, uh, let me increase this one after the other in different directions, updates. This uh, application can help me to, it can help me to redraw that particular uh, cell. I want to reproduce it in the X direction by one update, by another one update. You can see I can make it longer. I can make it also grow in the Y direction. I can make it grow in the Y direction till I'm tired. I can also make it grow upwards in the Z direction. So what this means is that at this corner, this is uh, uh, the lower, so I can also help me to rotate as I like. So let's just reduce it to just two tools. I so that it will be easy for us to learn one or two things out of it. So when it reduces to, Let's uh, check with me asset cells. With the asset cell, it will take a particular, it takes a particular cell and it encloses it with everything that's uh, with its own territory.
Okay, it seems I'm back online. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, so display. So like we did, uh, we said in uh, our, uh, what we call it? Like, uh, okay, another thing we can do is to say, uh, so from this input file, there is something I would like us to view quickly, which is we want to calculate the total energy of this system of a system of aluminum uh, arranged in face centered cubic structure. What will be the minimum, uh, what will be the total energy rather? So I want to calculate the total energy of this aluminum uh, crystal. I can easily say there is a, a code PWX, uh, come here, I'll say, Aluminium does iron. Then the output should go to aluminium does out. So it is currently now it has completed the run. So we can view our output file aluminium dot out, and uh, this file was created just now. And you can see a lot of calculations that has been done. But what concerns us at this moment is total energy. And the total energy is somewhere down here. We can we have to look for it. Look at the total energy, 38.513. Let's see, my, sorry, minus 38.5136 Raybex. So if you can just note that energy and let's try to run it again. Let's run the code again by saying, uh, by going to the input file again. And now trying to modify that let this uh, change from 2.0 to let it become 2.0. One. So when I run it again, I'm running it again, it's going to replace what I have there. So instead of us opening the file to check what do we have there, I can use a command to just bring out the total energy. So on the total line of total energy, you can see it is minus three points, sorry, minus 38.508. So this is larger than what we had initially. So that means that for me to have increased the size of the cube, the total energy has increased. For the total energy to have increased, it means that it, uh, the system will be less stable at uh, the new lattice parameters that I uh, allotted. Let's open the input file again. At the input file, looking at the, uh, okay, we adjusted, we increased the, uh, Lattice parameters here from 2.02 to 2.1. We increased it, and we can notice that the total energy increased. So let's even try to reduce it further. Let's make it 1 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 1.9. 
And uh, these are the lattice parameters, A1, A2, sorry, we are lattice vectors, reflective lattice vectors, A1, A2, and A3. So what we, let's run this again and uh, see what we'll have. And uh, we can also check what will be the output. You can say now what we have is the energy is minus 38.504. Minus 38.504 is larger than minus 38.513 we had initially. So that means that for the original input file, which is, which has 2.02. .02, year, 2.02 year is the optimal. So that is uh, what uh, this program does is attempting to solve a uh, Schrodinger equation. So by solving the Schrodinger equation, it uh, tries to calculate the total energy. If you say you have uh, two, uh, two aluminum atoms separated by this distance, what will be the total energy? So it is your work to from the total energy to vary the distance of separation. By varying the distance of separation, the one that has the least, the uh, uh, dimension that has the least is what would uh, uh, that is what we are going to adopt as the sorry here sorry. The uh, cell that has the least is what we'll adopt as the uh, optimal structure. The cell that has the least, the cell that has the least uh, uh, energy is what we we'll take as the optimal structure because since it's having the least energy, it means that it is having. You know, it, uh, it's having this energy means that it is having. Uh, uh, stability to be more stable at that uh, condition. So uh, there are also, let me also show you another input file here. Let me close this excluder and open another one. Uh, there is also one X, I have another input file here by one of my former students, uh, Angela, is one of the students uh, in whom I'm well pleased. So in this work, we have a uh, eyebrow two, meaning face centered cubic, eyebrow two, meaning face centered cubic, cell DM1. So initially we had eyebrow zero. And because we had eyebrow zero, we spoke about some cell parameters at the base. But here eyebrow two, from the manual of quantum espresso means that face centered cubic and uh, cell DM1 means that the dimension length A and the length A here is 8.31 bars. This is not angstrom, it is ball, 8.31 bars. And the uh, number of atoms is two because aluminum is a type of atom, nitrogen is another type of atom. This work is considering aluminum and nitrogen. And uh, number of atom, so, so sorry, number of atoms is two because we are actually putting two atoms together within the same face center cubic. And the uh, number of atom types is two because we have aluminum and we have uh, nitrogen. So there are two different types of atoms. But the number of, uh, uh, and uh, so every other thing here, we know it's better ourselves. Okay, let's come to atomic position. Atomic position for aluminum is at zero, 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 while for nitrogen is at one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. We are going to see this very shortly in the, while we continue the class. So um, let's, okay, I think uh, let me suspend this and let's continue with our lecture. Then we'll come back here to run this uh, file. Okay, but uh, let me just uh, visualize first. Let's see. Let's uh, excuse them. Excuse them. Aluminium. Okay. Open.
infrastructure, open aluminium nitride. Okay. I think it's looking a bit familiar. You can see that uh, we have the big balls represents uh, uh, should represent aluminium, while the small ones should represent nitrogen. So looking at them, well, if you close your eyes to the nitrogen atoms, you will notice we have uh, the aluminiums forming face-centered tubic. So just like we did earlier with the aluminum atoms, we can come here to say, let's us reproduce this cross in space. Let it grow to the right. Let it grow to the uh, so other directions, to the front. I can say let it grow upwards. So no matter how you look, view it, it doesn't end. It ends where you are, whenever you are tired. So let's, let me just make it in a small dimension so that it will be able to find it easy to view. So this is aluminum nitride. And when you look at it, when you try to close your eyes to the, to the blue, what you see is the conventional face-centered cubic. Conventional face-centered cubic. So let's uh, leave that for now. And let us now move to the uh, next part of the uh, course in our courseway. We'll continue from here later. Um, about vacation, drive. So talking about a difference, we have some real structures like sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is, uh, I'll try to visualize this in the next class, but the one that we are almost visualize right now is uh, zinc blend structure. The structure I've shown you just now from uh, my uh, students, uh, Angela Latuboso is uh, something of this nature. We have where at the corners we had aluminum, but inside we have uh, nitrogen. So in this case, you know, this particular uh, structure is very common with uh, zinc uh, sulfide. And that's why it is named after the uh, uh, the compound zinc sulfide structure or zinc blend structure. So I think it's also called the Woosite uh, structure. So this structure, this structure, uh, we can see that for, uh, at the corners we have zinc. The yellow points are the zinc atoms, while the purple points are the sulfur atoms and they are connected they are uh, uh, everything this are uh, like the interatomic bonds these lines you see they are interatomic bonds <laughs> and uh, the information we have here is telling us the arrangement of zinc in this cell the location of zinc the location of sulfur so when you look at this it's like you plotting a graph this is the, taking this to be the origin. When you take this to be the origin, you will have zero, 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 which is the first item we have here. And where you sell half, half zero, that is, you come here, X, half, come here, Y, half. So let's take coming to the right as X, moving up as Y, and going inside as Z. 
then we should be able to say this is alpha of zero, which is the second item we have here. So let's go back to the origin, half zero half. Coming to the right is half, going up zero, going inside half. Then we have this point, which is also zinc. And uh, the third one here, let's come back to the origin, going to the right zero, moving up half and going inside half. Then we have these points. So the four points, one, two, three, four, are the points representing zinc. While for sulfur, sulfur, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter, we will come to the right, one quarter, move up, one quarter, go inside, another one quarter. So we have these points. For the second, uh, for the second point, let's come back to the origin, three quarter to the right, three quarter upwards, then one quarter inward. Then we have this point. The third point. So uh, I want you to observe these two points. This, uh, these two points are bright, while the, these two are dull. The ones that are bright are closer to rust, while the one that is dull is farther inside compared to the ones that are bright. And uh, when we take the third point, it says three quarter to the right, one quarter upward, and three quarter inward. Then we have this point. And the last one is saying one quarter on to the right, three quarter upward, and three quarter inward. We get to this point. So you would observe that the four points of sulfur is clearly described with these uh, addresses or these coordinates, whereas four of the zinc atoms are being described by this. There are also some here that are not being described, but you should now remember again that within this cell, we have just four zinc atoms. This, uh, so when you calculate it very well to say that this is contributing one over eight, 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 one over eight plus one over two plus one over two plus one over two. One. So when you add them up, you have four. And when you look at the sulfur atoms, the sulfur atoms, they are entirely within this volume, making it directly four atoms within the volume. So we have four atoms of zinc and four atoms of sulfur within this cube. So, and this is uh, called the, uh, this is called the uh, zinc sulfide structure. And uh, this is very close to diamond structure. In diamond structure, you will just imagine that all the balls are, let's say, color black when they are all, when you replace all the zinc and all the sulfur with carbon, then you have what is called diamond structure. So uh, uh, diamond structure is like you having two face centered cubics that are uh, interlaced at uh, one quarter, one quarter, one quarter diagonal. So when you have a, this is, you see, this carbon atom, this carbon, uh, sorry, this is zinc atoms here, they form, when you close your eyes to the rest, just like I showed you in uh, Angela's work, the uh, zinc atoms, when you view them alone, you are going to see just, uh, when you view them alone, you are going to see face centered cubic. If you close your eyes to the zinc and you view the sulfur atoms alone, you are still going to have face centered cubic. And that is one of the usefulness of the application I showed you earlier. In the application I showed you earlier, I was able to uh, expand this cell to the right, to the left, upwards, downwards, inwards. By doing that, if we close our eyes to the zinc atoms, we would notice that the sulfur atoms will also form their own separate face centered cubic. So these are two face centered cubic that are. Uh, that are interconnected, they are interleaved uh, so that uh, 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 their bonds will be uh, created. And so uh, uh, by saying that, 
we can decide to take this point to be origin. It don't necessarily mean that the origin must be your zinc. Your origin may be your sulfur, and you take this to be your zero, zero, zero. And when you continue that, you know, when you move to the right, when you take this to be your origin, and when you attempt to move by half, half, zero, you would find a lattice point, which coincides to another identical uh, structure. So I think I should uh, stop here now. So, but uh, when we meet, hopefully next week, we'll uh, start from this particular point that tells us, uh, that tells us simple cubic structures. So I hope by next class, we should complete uh, this and uh, uh, start reciprocal lattice uh, space. Do we have any question? Okay, so meet next Monday. Bye bye. Thank you.